Hello, once again, everyone. I'm your host, Ray Shasho. Welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends, brought to you by the Rockstar Chronicles. What are my new book featuring over 45 intimate conversations with the greatest musical legends in the world we ever know, available now at bookbaby.com and amazon.com. Blues legend Joe Lewis Walker is one of the greatest bluesmen of his generation. He's a four-time Blues Music Award winner and 2013 Blues Hall of Fame inductee who has appeared on multiple Grammy-winning albums. He is known worldwide as one of the genre's top musical trailblazers, a mesmerizing guitarist and soul-testifying vocalist. New York Times raves. Walker is a singer with a Cadillac of a voice. He delivers no-nonsense, gutsy blues. His guitar solos are fast, wiry, and incisive, moaning with bluesy despair. Rolling Stone simply calls him ferocious. Billboard writes his playing blows all over the map. Gut bucket blues, joyous gospel, Rolling Stones style rock crunch, and aching R&B. Walker's guitar playing is fine and fierce. Joe won the 2016 Blues Foundation Contemporary Blues Male Artist of the Year Award of the Blues Foundation Awards in Memphis. The Blues Music Awards are universally recognized as the highest accolade afforded blues music performers. The annual Blues Music Awards ceremony is the premier event for blues professionals, musicians, and fans from all over the world. Joe is proud to let you know that his brand new album of new music entitled Eclectic Electric will be released on November 12th on Los Angeles-based record label Cleopatra Records. Please welcome legendary electric blues guitarist, singer, songwriter, and producer Joe Lewis Walker to interviewing the legends. Hello, Joe. Hey, Ray. How's it going? I tell you, man, I you don't look anything like you're in your 70s. You look great. Well, thank you. I try to take care of myself um, and, you know, I do my best I can. I don't know what you're doing, but it's working. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Okay. Okay. Number one, number one, I'm vegan. Okay. Okay. I haven't eaten meat in I don't know how long. Number wow. two, I don't smoke. Number Good. three, I don't drink. Uh, uh, number four, I try to, I, when I ain't, when I, and when I'm not doing what I'm doing, uh -huh. I'm chilling. I'm not, you know. Um, I, I, I sort of, you know, I, I really like being at home with my cats and my animals and my <laughs> deer in the backyard. And, you know, I, I, I got enough excitement to last. So, you know, I, I, I try I, I try to, you know, be as even keel as possible. You know, it, it, it's, it's not believe me. People that know me like my, my daughter and my, my grandkids. Hell yeah. Right. But, you know. It, it serves me well. You know, Man, the, the blues have changed. You know, a blues artist that doesn't drink. How about that? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, well, I, I think um, a lot of things have changed. Right. You know. Yeah, I think you're right. How many grandkids you got? Uh, three. Oh, you got three? Yeah. Yeah, I got your beat. I got five. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about the new album, Eclectic Electric, and that's exactly what it is. You got a nice mix of blues, r and B. I I love it. I think it's a great album. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, man. Um, starts out with Uptown Girl Blues, which is a traditional blues uh, tune, which is great. You have, uh, is it Jimmy Vivino plays yeah. on that track? Yeah. Yes, yes. Jimmy Vivino was the band leader for the Conan O'Brien show. Right. Uh, for quite a while. Yeah. Great guitar player. Good friend of mine. Now, who's playing slide on this one? Is that you or him? Me. That's you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I thought you guys might have been trading off or something like that. Well, we are. He's he's he's, he's, he's playing um the regular, you know, he, he's regular picking solo and I'm playing the slide solo. Right. Well, it's an excellent track, man. That, I mean, that, that kicks off the album nicely. And, uh, you know, what? one of my, uh, I got a couple of favorite tracks. You know, I love the blues, but, you know, I love when you do R&B. You know, I'd love to see you do more R&B because you got a great R&B voice. 
Thank you. You know, and when I heard, um, let's say a couple of tunes. One of them was "Bad Betty." After <laughs> hearing that track, I thought George Clinton was going to appear from the Mothership. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one from the Mothership. <laughs> Oh God! You, you got that one down pat, man. It's a great song. Well, thank you. You know, I, it's 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 an older song that I, that I written a while back, and mm -hmm. and and um, unfortunately, my two friends that are on that track with me, um, as well, um, um, Gino Blackmail, who who really uh, helped me, um, you know, get that track together. He's playing bass, and he's playing. He, he Gino played everything. Mm -hmm. um gino passed away uh uh during the COVID, and and oh, the, and, the, and the and the and the horn player picasso um he 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 he's, he passed away um so uh it, this album sort of dedicated to them sure because they're on they're, gino's on a few tracks he he's playing accordion on a song called wine he's he's playing mm -hmm. uh, uh on on some other stuff and and picasso's also on uh oh he's also on another track called a gone and alone so and so it's Gino. So um, this is sort of dedicated to those cats. You know, Gone and Alone takes me back to the '70s R&B um, era. You know, the good old days of R&B and all those great, great soul bands. You know, that it, it's another great track. Well, thank you, thank Love you. That, that that's, yeah, that's sort of my my um, my 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 song that I mm -hmm. wrote to be played at the family reunion. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, well, why not? <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I had Marshall uh, Thompson on from the Shy Lights the other day. Oh, wow. So, you know, th this stirs up those memories, you know, the Shy Lights, the Spinners, oh, yeah. the OJs and all that. Oh, all yeah. Those great, yeah. great, great yeah. bands from the 70s. Yeah. And, and then all those bands that were self-contained, all those groups you just mentioned were vocal mm -hmm. groups. Yes. You, you had all those bands were cool in a gang. You had, mm -hmm. you know, Slave with 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 all those great, you know, Sly, of course, because Sly started in 60. But you know, you had a lot of bands that were, you know, self-contained that were really cool. Yeah. They were the best back then, you know, and they knew how to dress. They, they were yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you should see Marshall now, man. He, he's really dapper. He's he's hasn't changed a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, some other songs, of course, you did Hotel California, and you did a great job on that, man. And you put your own spin to it. Well, yeah, I, I um, the you know the reason that I, this record is is called Eclectic Electric, and the reason mm -hmm. that I did what I did was because um, I think this is about my thirtieth album under my own name, right? Since eighty, since I came back to playing blues in eighty five, uh, or secular music. Uh, and, and so I asked, you know, my friends, my family, uh, uh, I, I asked people in the business, uh, record companies that I've been with, uh, ex-producers, blah, blah, you know, what do you hear me doing? You mm -hmm. know, and, and, and everybody, of course, has said, you know, like, well, you know, we, we like when you, when you come up with new songs with different people you write with, blah, blah, blah. But uh, one thread that was running through was like, hey, well, you know, we liked it when you did... Um, that compilation album with a bunch of other blues artists. You guys did the, the Beatles White album. You did a really slow version of Why My right. Guitar Gently Weep. So they said, well, we like it when you did um, What's So Funny About Peace, Love, and Understanding on the Nick Lowe tribute. And mm -hmm. so uh, I said, okay, well, send me some songs. And so they said, I got a whole bunch of songs sent to me and a whole bunch of things. But um, uh, mostly all those uh, the other the other songs were people that I know that, mm -hmm. that wrote them, you know. Um, Hotel California, the reason I did that, because I, I wanted to take the, one of the most iconic songs you could possibly listen to and flip it around. Right. And, and that, that was, you know, being from California originally, I mean, a lot of the places that he's talking about in that song, mm -hmm. just the experiences, especially if you're a musician, mm -hmm. you, you relate to coming in a hotel at three or four in the morning <laughs> <laughs> Nobody know where to check in. You're looking for the desk. You can't find the desk. You know, it's California. Yeah. You know, and you see, and then and well, where's somebody to talk to? And there's a guy in the corner and he's saying, man, you, know, you can check in, man, but I ain't seen nobody checking out. You know, <laughs> just weird stuff. Yeah. You know, all, strictly California stuff that you can, I can relate to. So I, I figured I would do Hotel California and I 
I wouldn't do the guitar army thing mm-hmm. because right. you can't do it no better than Joe Walsh and him did it. Yeah. What I wanted to do was tell the story because the story is it, it not not only is it sort of funny, but for guys like me, you know, we we know exactly what this cat's talking about. Mm-hmm. It's just it's no rhyme or reason. You know, it, it's no rhyme or reason. You 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 go into a hotel <laughs> and and you know and somebody's got a suite with 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 mirrors, there's no mirrors here, <laughs> but there's mirrors up on the ceiling. And you say, okay, well, I know what that's for, you know? <laughs> so, but you know, it's just that kind of thing. It's just the um, um, theater of the absurd. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least you didn't throw any furniture out the window. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Yeah, I didn't hear too many blues guys do that, you know? <laughs> No man, <laughs> no. no, we we'd be in jail, bro. <laughs> the, the other song. Now I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb. I like your version better, Werewolves of London. I do like your version better. Well, um, I, 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 that's one song that I recorded and I sent to one of the guys that wrote it because he's a good friend of mine. I sent it to Waddy. You okay. know, after we had recorded it, and Whitey said, "Well, that's just the way I wanted Warren to do it, Joe." <laughs> and so I said, "Well, in that's the case, well, why don't you put some of that slide guitar, your slide guitar, on it?" Right. And so Whitey was kind enough to uh, put the slide guitar on there for me, and um, he also, you know, he played on my last record. He played on this record. He played on uh, the track, second track, Wine. He played on uh, Make No Mistake, the expensive wine, no song. Uh, that they, Keith and uh, Steve Jordan wrote. Mm-hmm. Um, he, yeah, so Waddy's um, been in my life here. <laughs> it's my brother from another mother, <laughs> really. You know, that's a gr- that's a great take. The Werewolves of London. You you, you nail that one, man. And you thank know, you, thank you. It's awesome. It's got a little R and B soul, funky. Yeah, uh, made, a little, made a little made a little made a little funkier. You yeah, know, made, yeah. made a little funkier, and you know, a little bit more. I don't know, tongue in cheek, but it's already a funny song. So yeah, you know, it it's, it's great. To, it, <laughs> so, and it's the right time of year for it too. It is. Know. It really is. And and the single is out. The single for that song is is has it's been a, released. It's officially out. I, yeah, the okay. single has been released. Uh-huh. All right, cool. Yeah, but we still got to wait till November for the album, right? Is it well, you? yeah, but but yeah. you can you can buy it on you can buy it on a number of platforms right, online. Right. And, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. Again, Don Henley. All she wants to do is dance. Snuck that one in there too. Well, you know that that's sort of the connection I have with Wadi. It's mm-hmm. also with with a uh, uh, with a Danny a Kachimo who wrote that song. You know, with Henley. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, and, and Danny would have played on it, but we recorded that uh, in the middle of the pandemic. You know, and so we couldn't even you really couldn't even jump on a plane too much. You couldn't even do too much. much. In fact, I, I remember everybody was on their knees begging for a, for a vaccine, really, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, you know, go figure, you know, we were on our knees begging for a vaccine. We got the vaccine and now we're on, people on their knees don't want it. So <laughs> <laughs> it's life, you know? Yeah. But but that that song, um, I, I like it. I, I sort of, I don't know, I, I had my friend Philip write some horn charts for it. That, that sort of put it in a little bit of earth, wind, and fire territory because mm-hmm. he gets a little busy with the horns, which I sort of like, you know. So, yeah, it, you know, I love horns. It, it, it sort yeah. of worked out. And of course, you couldn't have a Joe Lewis Walker song without maybe a Muddy Waters track. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, what I did, you know, I, I, I took a song called Still a Fool, which Muddy did, which which, muddy, which which really is two trains running, two trains and I running. just took yeah. a, a several different muddy songs and and sort of morphed them together, yeah. <laughs> so that I could just you know give sort of a little bit of homage to muddy, you know, uh, and um, that's just me playing, mm-hmm. you know. It, it's no no uh, overdubs or that's you just me playing, you know, mm-hmm. and singing. Um, that's you know, with, which is with uh which is the way I started playing acoustic when I was right. a kid, you know, trying to, trying to catch a little bit of the magic that the older guys have. And, um, you know, it, it felt good doing it. So, I mean, I hope people like it. 
Oh, it's, 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 it's incredible, man. I love the album. And, and I was surprised, man. You had a Keith Richard, Keith Richards uh, tune in as well. Make no mistake. Yeah. 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 Um, I, uh, I've done a couple of, uh, of, of, of him and Mick's songs. I did, mm-hmm. um, I did a uh, heart of stone on a compilation. A bunch of us blues artists did right. Um, me, junior Wells, Taj Mahal, a bunch of us, Alvin Young, Bloodheart. We, we did a bunch. We did some, and I also, uh, did, um, uh, Another song, uh, um, uh, gee, I, I can't. I 2120 South Michigan Avenue, uh, which is uh, the instrumental that everybody, you know, when you're mm-hmm. a kid, you're growing up, you go in the garage, that's one of the songs you play, right. 2120 South Michigan Avenue, you know. Yep. And a lot of people don't know that that's the, that's the address of the chess record company mm-hmm. that uh, all the guys, Muddy Waters, Howlin' Wolf, yep. recorded at. It's also the address where the Rolling Stones recorded 12 times five their record which got their first number one hit mm-hmm. which was a bobby womack song mm-hmm. you know called it's all over now right you know uh, so it's a lot of you know um i i would asked him you know if uh you know i, I said i want to do this song because I, I i was uh i've been good friends with uh ronnie for about 30 years so i had asked keith uh if uh you know about this song and he said well you know just make it your own Joe." <laughs> so so that's that's <laughs> about, and that's you know that's what cool people do you know that you know yeah. because when you think about it every every group you really love no matter who it is mm-hmm. they started off trying to be somebody else you know always they start always. emulating someone else sure. so so someone like keith would know you know that when when they did a lot of covers when they did them their way Mm-hmm. Uh, that it was a different energy, a different you know thing. So you could do that, and and the same you know with the biggest British group like the Beatles, you know, when they yep. did you know roll over Beethoven, whatever mm-hmm. you know they 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 pretty much you know they they put a, their own stamp, their own energy on it, and that's what made a lot of young people yep. you know like the music you know coming out of the gate. You you know I I realize more and more how much the Beatles emulated Little Richard. You know, it, it was all Little Richard in the beginning, you know, with the, ooh, you know, that's Little Richard, man. <laughs> right? I don't know. I, 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 you know, we all know the story about Richard, you know, teaching Paul how to, how to do the, the high notes, you know. Yeah. But yeah. I don't think, just to be quite honest, I don't think that that was the total focus of them when they started. Right. I, I think it was a little bit more Chuck Berry. You think uh, so? Yeah, well, you know, yeah. all you have to if, all you have to do is come well, on, not no, but I mean, Chuck Berry, uh, it's Buddy Charles. Holly, it's Buddy Charles Holly, also. Buddy yeah. Holly, more than anybody, you know, with yeah. and the Everly Brothers with the harmonies. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what I like to say about, you know, guys like the Beatles, you know, after performing in Liverpool for a hundred freaking times, I, I played in Liverpool. My agent was in Liverpool in the really? 80s, so I, I yeah, I so know. I spent so much time there. Huh. You know, after and seeing that the, what they came out of, you know, the, the situations, um, they have a joke in, in Liverpool that that's where the Irish got stuck who didn't have enough money to get into London. So they just stayed in Liverpool <laughs> because all you do, you cross the Irish Sea. Uh-huh. There's Dublin. Dublin's yep. 30, 35 minutes away by airplane. That's Not it. even that long. That's it. You just cross the Irish Sea. You're in oh. Liverpool. Wow. You leave Liverpool, you cross the Irish Sea, you're in Dublin. So when you get to Liverpool, you get uh, that that cross current of a big, big, big portion of mm-hmm. everybody is of Irish descent, huh. you know. And so you get that with, with the dynamic of the Beatles too. It just wasn't McCartney that's part Irish. I mean, all them guys, mm-hmm. you know. It, it really and, and you, so when you hear the harmonies. The harmonies are, are are like Irish, you know. They, mm-hmm. they're, they're some serious the, the harmonies, you know, uh, uh, cultural things happening that a lot of people didn't know, right. you know. And, and, and so you you got that, and plus you got the whole thing of them being so close to Ireland. It was they were pretty tough cats, you know. Yeah. I mean, they, just to be quite honest about it, you know, it's pretty tough. So I, I think, you know, that 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 the Beatles liking this kind of music just sort of really was part of who they were mm-hmm. you know if they were growing up they also sure. like the melody the melodies you know like 
the Everly Brothers, those two part harmonies right. and Buddy Holly, the overdubbing, Buddy Holly overdubbing, you know. So yeah. you got all that. So I would say yeah. the, the British, the British guys were like sponges mm -hmm. for American music. Yeah. All they did was put a new, new um, energy in, and bring it back. Yep. You know, that's, that's all they did, you know, and then they, of course, they grew as musicians, all of them did. Yeah. And, you know, and, uh, and, and had some great music, you know. Yeah. And thanks to them, they brought, uh, you know, the British blues, they brought the blues back, you know, they, they, they brought the, uh, the old well, guys well, back well, into uh, focus. Uh, yeah. 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 The focus. Because the focus. The blues, yeah. Because the blues never went anywhere. Right. But, you know, it, it just was that it was, it was not in fashion. You right. Know? And, and and I think for something to be in fashion to a younger audience, you have to have younger faces. Sometimes, right. I agree. You know, I agree. With and you. as it is now, you have a lot of young people playing, yep. playing blues and rocking it up. And, and, and really, you know, really, really, it's, it's another whole um, a resurgence uh, of the blues right now. Uh, I do believe. There's a lot of women in blues now, isn't there? A lot of good Always women wasn't. guitar players. It, you know? it always was a lot of women in the blues. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and some some decent guitar players, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they've always had, I mean, one of the greatest guitar players, man, woman, child, whatever, was Sister Rosetta Tharp. You yep. know, I mean, she played a lot of blues. Uh, um, yeah. uh, a Barbara, Barbara Lynn, who had a, a huge hit. With, um, um, and, and Lady Bo, who played with Bo Diddley. I mean, mm -hmm. so so it was women playing guitars, you know, quite quite. You know, it just wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't as prevalent as it is now. I think. Yeah, and it, unfairly, it was not publicized like it should have been. You know, yeah, those guys yeah. should have been. I mean, they were at the top of their game. You know, well, they Sister were, Rosetta Tharp was uh, at one point was, one of the yeah. highest paid artists in the United States in any genre. Yeah. You know, so you know, but it, it, you know, you you, you can't play the hand you're not dealt you gotta true. play the hand you're dealt you know <laughs> that's true that is true you know when this album was coming out i was i was thinking you know joe's not gonna top blues coming out because that's one of my favorite albums you know but yeah man you, you, <laughs> you just about did it i mean it's 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 probably about the same as blues coming out for me you know well, it's, it's well, another great yeah. album the little bit of the thing about blues coming on was that it, it it that was a record where I had literally went to a bunch of my friends and said, hey, right. you know, people that you don't normally see on other people's record, you you know, and people think, oh, wow. Well, you know, I mean, I hear that song, you know, White Rabbit by Jefferson yeah. Airplane. Well, yeah. you know, but the little guitar motif in the song is so cool. Mm -hmm. You know, it draws you right in. And it's the choice of notes that the guitar player uses. And that guitar player, I, I, I've known for, for years. You know, Yorma Cochran and I have known Yorma for years. He's you know, cool. people say, well, yeah. yeah, people will say, well, you know, I, I, I've used, um, worked with uh, Mitch Ryder on this record, uh, mm -hmm. on Blues Coming On. Mm -hmm. And Mitch Ryder sounds just as good as he sounded when he did Jenny Takes a Ride and yeah. Devil with the Blue Dress on. Yeah. And a lot of people think, you know, just because John Sebastian's not on your TV singing, do you believe in magic? <laughs> well, but he still got that magic. See, yeah. <laughs> so you know, I, to get John in the studio and, and people like that was to me uh, Jesse Johnson. Other times, you mm -hmm. know, uh, 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 my friend Albert Lee. You know, yeah. not to be confused with Alvin Lee, right. Albert Lee, Albert Lee, uh, yeah. and, and people like that was mm -hmm. to me was you know I, I was you know I, I'm like a fan all these people mm -hmm. so so it worked out for, for this record eclectic electric this was some of the tracks i was going to put on the last record the last boots coming on was supposed to be a double out it was going to be 22 songs i had all the songs we were good to go <laughs> but it didn't it, it could you couldn't fit all the music you know one you know it would have been too much music for people to concentrate on mm -hmm. you know so okay it, it's, it ain't like the 70s or 60s when you can do a devil album, right. you know, and people would listen to a devil album. Yep. And, you know, man, they might hear a, a, flat, a track that didn't like that much, but while they're doing that, they're reading, you know, they're looking at all the different things you could look at on an album cover. Well, you try, you try to read, try to read a CD cover now. I mean, you have to, you, I mean, it's impossible. <laughs> 
I mean, really, it's, it, it, it's impossible. It's a shame. Yeah, it's a, shame. it's a different thing. It's a different thing. I know. I miss those days, though. I miss record stores, man. <laughs> well, they're coming. They're, they're, they're coming back a little bit. You I know. hope so. Yeah. I really do. I want to mention a couple of things I saw on YouTube. You and Jay Giles, I, I never saw that before. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When uh -huh. I I um when I when I moved to the East Coast, mm -hmm. um I, I I um was uh doing a bit of playing. And, and so people would come out that I wouldn't normally see when I lived on the West Coast, right? You know, because you know it's closer proximity in here and what what have you. And Jay was one of the guys that would come out, you know, and and um, we just, you know, we, he set in with me once, and we just hit it off real good. You know, mm -hmm. we had a, a common denominator, which was uh, Mike Bloomfield helped Jay Giles mm -hmm. band, and Mike Bloomfield also helped me. Sure. Uh, so so we had that. And so we could sit, just sit and tell Bloomfield stories for an hour. But then uh, when BB died, um, uh, I called Jay and I said, hey, man, I'm, I'm going to do some, some uh, a couple few shows, um, you know, to uh, as Peg Payne uh, acknowledge BB. Mm -hmm. And I know that you were, you know, you were friends with BB and I, I was fortunate enough to be in. And let's you want to do something? And he said, yeah, Jay said, yeah, you know, and I'm mm -hmm. I'm really happy that I got to know him because. Yeah. Um, Jay, Jay passed a few years ago and, you know, we spent a lot of time because we, we played some nice theaters on the East Coast here, the Paramount Theater here and some, some bigger theaters. So we, we had we had a good time. Yeah, it was nice to see uh, Jay guys playing some blues, too, you know. Yeah. Oh, he can play. Yeah, <laughs> he, can play. He, he sure can. <laughs> he can play. I never saw that before. I really haven't. Uh, another... Back in 2011, you, buddy, guy, Quinn Sullivan, was that the kid that was? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What is yeah. it like when you see a, a kid playing like that? Well, the first thing I always <laughs> say is, you know, when people say, oh, man, that kid's great. I say, well, you know, I wish people were there when that was. When I was 16 years old playing with Mississippi Fred McDowell, you know, <laughs> but that was 1966. No. But I, I, I'm glad, I'm glad for him. I, I, I just, you know, my, 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 um, in my humble opinion, uh, I, I think that when you're young, you always want to be older, you know, mm -hmm. so that you have more mm -hmm. knowledge. Right. When you're older, you always say, man, I wish I had done X, Y, Z when I was younger. Yep. But usually when you're younger, especially if you're a musician, you you want to, you know, there's how, how, does, how does this magic happen? You know, how does it happen? How do you how did you do that? How do you do that? And then when you get if you get lucky, you might catch it once or twice. You say, OK, how do you do it every night? How do you how do B.B. King and Muddy Waters Albert King plays the same guitar solo, mm -hmm. the same solo mm -hmm. every night in yeah. Paris, Texas, and then the next week in Paris, France, and get the same freaking response. How do you do that? And well, that is the power of the blues. Yeah. It isn't the yeah. power of the individual. Yeah. Not that they all are powerful. Don't get me wrong. But that's the power of the blues. Mm -hmm. And so now you have younger people playing a lot more notes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and people are people are, are you know, they're they're sort of God smacked by it. But what really are these younger people wrapping themselves in? They're wrapping themselves in the blues. And right. you know what the if the blues mm -hmm. means one thing, mm -hmm. if it means one thing, it means this credibility. Yeah. Anytime you see an older rock star coming back to find mm -hmm. blues roots. Mm -hmm. So you'll have a John Mellencamp making mm -hmm. a blues record that'll go to number one. Right. Okay. You'll have the Stones, but that is their roots in a way. Mm -hmm. You'll have everybody and their mother making a blues record at some time mm -hmm. in their career, finding their blues roots. Yeah. And that's all fine and, and nice because blues does mean credibility. It does. I agree with you. You know, blues is amazing because it, it's it's a feeling, and you trans you transfer that feeling inside you into your guitar, into your fingers. You know, and that no, not many people can do that. <laughs> you know, yeah, I admire it, you guys for doing that. But and it's true. You know, it, you know? It, it's 
if you can make someone feel what you feel exactly then then I, that doesn't make um you do, it doesn't have to be written down on some music paper it doesn't have to have no. you know no disrespect it doesn't have to have uh, a, 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 a million dollar light show uh and 18 dancing girls and smoke coming up out of mm -hmm. it. it it don't you don't have to be in a in, in a two million dollar uh, uh uh silver eagle bus you don't have to have on a one thousand dollar armani suit and five hundred dollar uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh uh shades none of that you don't have nope. to have any of that nope. because what the blues is it's telling a story and when you tell the story you 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 hopefully convey the feeling of, of the uh, and a lot of times it's cathartic you know mm -hmm. and that's the big thing about it is, is that in, in a perfect song in a good song mm -hmm. you, you, there's adversity as it is in life there's um you know you, it's the king richard king lear you know you yeah. you're born clean and and you 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 gain the world and you lose your soul yeah. and you gain the rest of the time trying to find your soul yeah. you know <laughs> And that's uh, and I think that blues helps in that. It, it's sort of uh, I always say that Shakespeare was a blues guy because <laughs> all of his songs, Good. really, all, all of his all of his his plays were like songs. Yeah, they were like blues songs. You know? Yeah. Well, why don't you take the words of Shakespeare and put it into blues? <laughs> well, you know, Shakespeare that, blues. You know, it's not bad. Not a bad idea. <laughs> You'd be the first. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. You know. It wouldn't be that easy, but you know, I bet you can do it. Well, hey, you know, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that, man. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's just, it, it's just. I, I think it would. It, the, the, the thing about something like that is the form of the music, right? You know, I think you might have to go out of your one, four, five chord progressions that right. blues is associated with, yeah. and you might have to introduce something different mm -hmm. in there to get people's attention. Right. You know, the, the whole thing with anything is getting people's attention. Sure. And the other part is keeping their attention. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I agree, man. You know what I love? You know, when they have these big jams, you know, you got you, uh, uh, Buddy, Johnny Winter and, and uh, Clap. Everybody's on stage and you trade licks. And it's like everybody's got their own story, you know, and, you know, you point at somebody and he does his thing. Somebody else does his thing. Everyone's got their, it's like their own story, you know, when they play, yeah. play the blues. It, it, it's so cool. I love yeah. that. Yeah. And, and nine times out of 10, when, you, when, when, when it's in the blues genre, it's not a competition. No, you know, it's never it is. really You're is. Right. It, it, it's not. And, and because we always say, in, in, you know, when, when I, when I manager sends me a contract and they say that, you know, and at the end, you're going to have a, there's a big blues jam and, and it's going to be this. And obviously, whoever does that is not a musician, right, because what right. you want to, you what you want is the musicians to say, "Hey, well, let's have a blues." Or, you know, you, yeah. <laughs> you know. But then, okay, okay, you you acquiesce to that, and, and what what usually they'll say is, "Okay, well, can you guys jam on Sweet Home Chicago or mm -hmm. Got My Mojo Working or something?" And, and right. the thing is, is that we've played it so many times. Mm -hmm. So you you think of okay, let's play something a little bit different, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to play the thrillers gone, man. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but you, you hit it right on the head, man. It's not a competition, and you guys kind of root each other on, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, yeah. There's no world world series of the blues. Yeah. You know, yeah. even though some people might want to think so, there is. Yeah. You know, there, and there's no such thing as the best. It could be the best yeah. on any given day. That's you right. know, it, it's it's that's but, just being honest about it. I was watching you and Buddy Guy, and, and Buddy Guy looks at you and take it away, man. Take it away, Joe. <laughs> you know, it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, but it's like certain Buddy. people. Buddy's cool. It's, isn't cer <laughs> it's certain people. It's certain people when you get on stage with them, no yeah. matter who's on stage, right? That everybody's gonna play some of their guitar licks yeah. so if you're on stage with bb king and you're playing a blues <laughs> everybody said well, what the hell am i doing up here because bb's right there i know and i, I know. know i gotta play a bb king lick yeah so the audience can relate yeah. to it yeah. you know what i'm saying and yeah, if you're on right. stage with a, if you're on stage with albert king you gotta play albert king guitar lick yeah. i mean some people made made a living off playing like albert king yeah i mean literally 
taking his solos and lifting them out of the song and putting them in their song, <laughs> note for note. Do yeah. you know that? That's like wearing somebody else's shoes. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Didn't Zeppelin it, do it, that? But, <laughs> well, somebody did it. Uh, they, took, uh, they took Old Pretty Woman, the solo, and put it in a song called Strange Brew. Right. And then they, then they just did Old Pretty Woman. And took, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? that's that's part of 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 the trajectory of 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 you know of, of how it works you yeah. know in, in a way you know uh, but um personally speaking i i couldn't take somebody's solo note for note it would just be like i i you know it, it would just that's their imprint that's right. that's their dna right. you know i i mean i could play homage to it but but note for note i, I couldn't do it you know it's cool you got your own dna because i i can hear you without looking at you just listen and I, I said that's joe you know you do have your own dna which is great because that's hard to do in the blues isn't it well it's hard to do anything yeah you know it's hard to do anything but i made it a point uh when i first started playing i, I could play really fast when i was younger i mean mm -hmm. real fast right like like some of the guys now and i after playing with older guys you know especially with mississippi fred mcdowell and mm -hmm. and opening up for people like Muddy and playing with people like BB King and and seeing other people, um, I found out that the way that they looked at soloing was like a conversation, mm -hmm. okay. And it, what I would do, I would go back and listen to the records, and none of them took more than one pass to solo, mm -hmm. one pass around. It was only in the '60s uh, when people got sort of indulgent and started playing everything they knew on one song right you know uh, so and and I'm, I'm not adverse to that i mean someone wants to shred whatever the hell that means great that's wonderful <laughs> you know but i i think it's like this it, it it's it's if music's a conversation and and the solo is 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 in the middle of the conversation nobody talks like this all the time hey Ray, what are you doing hey man, you got me. there's a beginning to the way we talk mm -hmm. when we get we make our point in the middle, mm -hmm. then we may get a, a little more, um, I won't say emotional, but a, a little more, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and then at the end, you, you, your summation, that's right. what you do. Right. So when you play a guitar solo, to mm -hmm. me, um, when when I listen to a guitar solo uh, 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 on on a good song, I listen for a beginning, a middle, and an end, mm -hmm. sure. you know, uh, and it's got to lead back into something. It's right. got to come out of something, say something, and lead back into something. But, you know, I, I understand mm -hmm. that, you know, especially coming out of San Francisco, yeah. where, jam, where jam band started, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and jamming all night. Mm -hmm. I, I understand, you know, the dynamics of it, you know, uh, uh, but there's a time and a place to say what you want to say and, 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 and make your point and, and then you know, uh, um, some do your summation and get out. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, 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 but you know, it, we, we're in a, we're, we've been in. Uh, I think um, an era of uh, 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 onslaught of 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 of, of impress me. You mm -hmm. know, impress Im, uh, impress. Me. What 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 can someone do next to impress me? Well, I can I can jump six feet in the air with my guitar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. But are are you playing anything while you jumping? No. What there's twenty thousand people up there just love to see me jump. Yeah. Hey man, yeah. don't stop jumping, bro. <laughs> don't stop jumping. Them checks might freeze up. Keep on doing what you're doing. You know, whatever whatever makes it work. So uh at any rate, the way I look at guitar playing is like a, I try to look at it like a conversation. And and what I look for is legato. Is to make mm -hmm. the guitar sound like the voice, mm -hmm. to make the, the notes ring out. That's what I look for because yeah. once you start, the faster and the louder you get. Once you get fast, there's nowhere to go. Yeah. Once you get loud, there's nowhere to go. True. So you have you have nothing to work with, you mm -hmm. know, because silence is a friend in music, mm -hmm. and and um, nuance I, mm -hmm. for me is is a friend in music. You know, I, I admire the cats that they don't read music and it, it just comes from the heart, you know, or from your head. It's amazing. I, I, I can't fathom that. I can't do that. I play guitar, 
but I, I just can't pick up a guitar, listen to a record and, and start playing that song. It, it's not in me, you know? Well, I, I think most people, you know, you, you, you start uh, when you're young and you, you pick out, you know, notes. Uh, da, da, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, yeah. Da, 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 da. You know, <laughs> the and simple then, stuff. Then, and then, then you, you, you progress from there, you right. know, because the same dude that wrote that simple stuff was the same <laughs> dude that wrote that complicated, all those diminished chords and make no mistake. Yeah. So, you know, he grew. And, and so <laughs> you, you, I think you, you grow and, and the, and the instrument will show you certain things if right. you, you know, keep your ears open. Right. You know, what kind of guitars you're playing lately? Anything different? I, I, you have a, I, I saw somewhere about a, a Roseo. Is it the Roseo model guitar? Yeah, I have a, a Rosio uh, that Rosio. they made for me. Yeah, yeah, that they made for me in Japan. But I, I, I I've been mostly playing um a Zemitis, Zemitis, Zemitis guitar. Yeah, okay. which is um they have the sort of the metal front sometime, and then they have the 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 pearl front. Um, uh, um, I could show you better to tell you. <clears throat> Never keep it too far away. So this, this is this. Is, this oh this is, wow, that's this is beautiful. The this that's is the gorgeous, front. man. Where'd you get yeah. that? Where's that from? Where's that made? Well, they made they they, they originally we made them in England in, in okay. the sixties, in the late sixties and seventies. Right. And and uh, then the company sold to Japan. Okay. And, and they 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 they've been making them for for a while now. And gorgeous. and um. And so I, I, but they also sound good. You know, they also sound really. They, they yeah. sound good. They got some nice. And, and the, the woods that they use are, mm -hmm. are really cool. Let's see. I got this other one. That's uh, that's that's Karina. Ooh, now, this is the one, one with, Yeah, this is the one with the with the metal front. Wow. And, but the wood, but the wood on this is Karina. Mm -hmm. And then the Karina wood sounds different than that. Right. Um, right. That's a different wood from Africa that, that they is use. Gorgeous. It. Yeah, and, and the woods where you really get the sound, you know. Yes. They're, they're, and Karina's Karina, and uh, I think Karina's one of the best, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that you can, you can for for really uh, a really sustaining sound sound. I like. You know? do, do you use uh, what kind of effects do you use? Pedals and that kind of thing. Do you use a well, lot? I, I got a few. I got a few. I, I got right. like the auto auto wah, which is the right. automatic wah wah. You don't have to step on it. You just wah. It does. You, you can set the parameters and it'll, it'll wah the way you want it to wah. Okay. And you know, I got a little um a delay pedal. Mm -hmm. I like a little slap on on it. You know, and um, let's see. I've got my tuner. You know, which which is a uh, really cool. Let's see. I'm looking at this thing. What else we got? I got just a little a little little boost, a, mm -hmm. a little little booster. And um, I got a backwards pedal because I I, I play a backwards solo in, in a song, uh, in a couple of tunes that I did. So I got the little backwards pedal that. Uh, how, how do you how do you play a backwards uh, solo? How do you do that? Like this. <laughs> 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 um, well, we used to back in the day. You had to cut the tape. Right. And do it back okay but um nowadays there's the pedal the little pedal right you can set the parameters and it it in it will make whatever you play play back backwards incredible okay? so you wow. hear like like when you hear a really good backwards solo okay. like uh like um uh are you experienced right 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 the, the song or right. um, the first backwards solo in, in music, I think was uh, Tomorrow Never Knows. Tomorrow no, no, it, what was it Tomorrow Never Knows or either it was um, I'm Only Sleeping, whatever okay. it was, it was John okay. Lennon, you yeah. know. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, it, 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 um, it, it gives you that effect of, of, of you know, it, it's like, man, I'm, I'm, am, am, I, am, I, am I, you know, in, 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 in the bins or something, but you, you, B-E-N-D-S not B and Z, okay? <laughs> but it gives you that feeling uh, of uh, um, being um, really psychedelic. That, yeah. That's the best way I can put it. 
but you really have to know when to use it and when to come out of it sure. because a little, a little bit of it, it's like slide guitar for me. Mm -hmm. A little bit of slide guitar goes a long way mm -hmm. for me. You know, that's why guys that perfected it like Muddy Waters, mm -hmm. you only use it once in a while. Mm -hmm. He didn't use it all. He wasn't Elmore James. Right, he didn't right, use right. it all the time. Yeah. But yeah, Elmore James didn't mm -hmm. use it all the time. Yeah. You know, so it, it's, it's, I, I think it, it, it gets your attention and it's a good tool to use. But if you're going to play uh, um, a slider, you're going to play, you can play the backward pedal all the time. Mm -hmm. Although there's so many things you can do with it. You can do things with it vocally. You can do things with it with drum wise. Mm -hmm. you, you can, you can do some pretty trippy things, you know, That's but then we'd, we'd have to turn, we'd have to then take you to the drug rehab. <laughs> <laughs> Say, say, hey, well, we don't know what happened to Ray, but everything's been going backwards. Everything's been backwards with Ray lately. Yeah. I love backwards. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, what, what are you going to do? What's next? What What do you envision as far as future albums? How eclectic do you want to get? I mean, well, um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about doing some, some things with some friends or, that were, um, you know, around. Um, people that I looked up to, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm I'm hoping that 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 turned. I'm, I'm I'm also thinking I'm also been working on some stuff uh, of uh, another group where I'm from, San Francisco. Right, that's, that's really big, but I'm I'm doing doing some of their stuff and doing it sort of bluesy. So I'm 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 you know doing this some projects and stuff like that that mm -hmm. you know sort of creative stuff that sort of piques my interest, you know, and yeah. and um, and I. I I don't want to do what I've done over and over again. Right, I, right, I right. just, you know, I, I, I like to do, you know, to push myself and to try to, um, you know, surprise myself. You know, lately I've been taking a lot of gypsy guitar lessons online. Really? <laughs> oh yeah, I, I love. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I, I love Django Reinhardt, and oh, I, yeah. I lived in I lived in France for three years, mm -hmm. so I, I heard a lot of gypsy guitar players, and. Yeah. I, I was fortunate enough to, to meet a couple of the old, one of the old guys that used to play with Django. And, and so um, I, I, I like that. And I've been taking some, I got a good vocal coach I've been working over, um, with. Just, you know, to, to um, you, you can do different things and, and sing in different um, genre, genres, you know? Yeah. To other things. So, I mean, I'm due to, due to make a gospel record one of these days. And yeah. like, you were, like you were saying, a soul record. Just where I just you know I, I made a couple of records where I just mostly sing. I don't even hardly play the guitar, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm thinking of doing that. You know, uh, but to do that, I, I I really feel like I got to get in really good shape and good and 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 you know really feel like I can um, add something. You know, mm -hmm. to to really push myself mm -hmm. and and try to be as prepared mm -hmm. as I can. You exactly. know, uh, yep. and so, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I could hear you singing some Al Green, you know, Take Me to the River. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> little, Curtis, little Curtis Mayfield, maybe. I love Curtis Mayfield. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Man. Yeah. That yeah. was the first concert I ever went to was Curtis Mayfield. Yeah, I think it was 1970 or something like that. You know, I, oh, I, my, I think Superfly came out at that time. You know, Freddie's yeah. dead. And, yeah. You know, 71, yeah. 70, 71. Yeah, I love the way yeah. he sings. You know, yeah, it's just Mister Mister um, Cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. Plus, <laughs> guys like him. You know, when you're a songwriter, you you listen to guys like him, Bob Marley, mm -hmm. Sly Stone, Sly Stone, and they they could. I, I always call it the Iron Fist and the Velvet Glove because they could say some of the harshest things that if you just said it walking down the street, right. people would look at you. But they could say them and put them into some of the nicest melodies mm -hmm. and stuff. Put it, and, and you know, who cares if Bob shot the sheriff or not? You know, <laughs> <laughs> the song sounds so damn exactly. good. I don't care. Exactly. You know? <laughs> you know, I always consider Sly Stone as the Beatles of R and B or soul. You know, I mean, no, well. the hits that he had was incredible. You know, it's just yeah. a shame that he burnt out the way he did. You know, he he could have given us so no. much more. Well, the music business, the, you know, the music business is rough on people. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm from the same neighborhood as Sly mm -hmm. Stone. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. from the Ingleside neighborhood. They call it Ocean View Ingleside. Right. Uh, neighborhood in San Francisco. 
And um, in fact, you know, to be quite honest, um, uh, I was the first, one of the first three African-Americans at, at the Catholic school that I went to, and there was mm -hmm. only two African-American families in our, in our whole area. And that was my dad moving right. there and, and Reverend Stewart, which is mm -hmm. Slide's father. And he moved his, huh. him and his sons, uh, Freddie and, and, and Sylvester, with Slide and right. daughter, uh, uh, Rosie. And yeah, they moved out the same thing. And so uh, I, I know that Slide would really love what you just said. Mm -hmm. You know, because he was, uh, I remember Sly going to music, going to, going to uh, take some music uh, college classes. And it was like a two year course. And he like finished in two months. <laughs> <laughs> Me, meanwhile, he was producing people. Meanwhile, he was on the radio, uh, 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 a DJ. Meanwhile, he yeah. was, had his own band. That's right. and, you know, I mean, he, he, he was driven, you know, I yeah. mean, when, when I was younger, that was one of the guys that we looked up to with, with Sly Stone because he ha he also had success with a song called uh, "Do You Wanna Dance Under mm -hmm. the Moonlight." That's right. With Bobby That's Freeman, right. he played all the instruments on the next song called yeah. "Slim." Yeah. So he was he was um he was tailor made for when when guys like the Beatles and all those guys came out because Sly was like, "Oh man, that's what I think of. I you know that's what I yeah." Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, he was he was incredible, way ahead of his time, man. Yeah, yeah. And definitely. what I understand, I think he was the hero of Woodstock. What I, I know, a lot of people went to Woodstock, and I talked to performers of Woodstock. They say it was Sly Stone. A lot of people said it was Alvin Lee, but you know, going home was a little um, repetitive. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, well, it's that thing, you know. I mean. Okay, let's let's look at it like this. <laughs> it's it's two different sort of mindsets. Yeah, it's the it's the guitar hero thing. Yeah, it, it's the guitar it's the guitar hero thing. Right, it's play every note you know and some you don't know. Yep, over and 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 over again. Yep, or it's it's the soul thing of going out in the audience. <clears throat> grabbing people and connecting with the That's people it. they That's both it. they both work yeah you know um uh it, it, it just um and then you had someone like joe cocker who was yeah. doing both yeah. you know i True. mean you know with, with with the big band and 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 the, and the great musicians and and you know all that so you know woodstock was uh it was sort of cool you yeah know? to yeah. me to me to me the hero of woodstock <laughs> The hero of any festival he was on was Jimmy, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just I know. because it's the Star Spangled Banner. Yeah, you know, and, and people don't know he didn't rehearse that. <laughs> it was not rehearsed. It was not. It was just something he did. Yeah, and you know, people always say, well, "So and so is a genius. So and so is a genius." <clears throat> well, you know, when when you can think something out mm -hmm. and you can overdub on it and mm -hmm. you can redo it and redo it and redo it and redo it and redo it. Then you know, okay, that's great. That there's a genius to that, but you know, a real genius is okay. Picasso, here's a brush, mm -hmm. and there's one thing of paint. Right. Get at it. Exactly. And he draws something that just not that nobody else in the world exactly. has done before or after. To me, that's what uh what Jimmy did, and everywhere he played, basically. How, how old were you, and how old was Jimmy when you met him? Uh, I think I was about, jeez, man, I was about 19 or 20. Yeah. I was about 19. How yeah, about, about Jimmy? What, was he, uh, was uh, this... He's about five years older than me. Okay. About, about, four, about four or five years older than me. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was, I met him several times, but yeah. uh, the one, one good time was, was a party after one of his shows and that, um, that they had threw out there where we lived in Mill Valley. Mm -hmm. And that was fun because you mentioned Sly Stone. Sly was at that Sly party. Was, really? Yeah. Yeah, he was there, and a bunch of those heavy hitter guys were there. I was just the driver for Bloomfield because I live with Michael, but I drive Michael, you know, sometimes wherever, wherever. So that was cool. And plus, I was good friends with Buddy Miles through Michael. Oh, I love Buddy and, Miles. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. I, you know, uh, if I had a dime for every time Buddy mentioned Jimmy Hendrix, I'd be rich, you know, because yeah. he always talked about him. But this yeah. before, before yeah. he became super famous. Yeah. So um, uh, it was um, it was it was good meeting him, and, and it was good being around him, and it was good just you know, just checking him out and check how he was. Because when I went to that party, 
it was like he was in he was in the room, Sly was in the room, Bloomfield in the room, buddy. You got all these serious, serious musicians, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. that they were successful. Yeah. You know, and I'm this young kid, man. I'm I'm like 19, 18. I mean, I'd I'd been, you know, people say, Oh, you're a great guitar player. And I was a mm-hmm. you know, maybe a big fish in a little little pond. But being around these guys and that growing up on them and seeing them and all this stuff, you know, it it was um I think I had a personal connection with everybody there except for Jimi Hendrix. Mm-hmm. And 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 by being able to be there with, with him and check him out, mm-hmm. you know, um I was not surprised that um I met him before Axis Boulder's Love came out. Really? Okay. So I was not surprised when Axis Boulder's Love and Buddy came and played the acetate, acetate of it. And and everybody just said, "Oh man, <laughs> what, what in the <laughs> world?" <laughs> yeah, you know. And it was like, you know, man, this is uh, this is what we've been waiting for, bro. Yeah, this is it. This is what we've been waiting <laughs> for. <laughs> you know, H- Hendrix's music just goes on and on. It never gets old. You know, it fits in every generation. Which well, you know what? Amazing. You know what's you know what's funny, Ray. Mm-hmm. You should use that. You should use that terminology. Never gets old because you know when I think of Jimi Hendrix or mm-hmm. people that I, I knew that I was in a mm-hmm. room with Jimmy James Joplin from yep. San Francisco, yep. or people like that, they never got old. Yeah, when you think about it, I know. You know, it, you know, and, and it's a trip because Weird, you, you think, in a way, you hate to say it, but would they have been afforded the, the you know, the the thing of getting old because we see what happened to other icons of mm-hmm. the era who did sort of get older, Yeah, you yeah. know, and it's, it's almost like, you know, except for, except for the Rolling Stones. I mean, <laughs> and, and I, I don't know if, if, if they made a pact with the devil, they're the ones that went to the crossroads. Wasn't Robert Johnson. They I went agree. Because Robert Johnson died when he was 27. I so agree. He started, he started that whole thing rolling, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You're right about that, man. They did write that song, Sympathy for the Devil. So, you know, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a song I want you to record from Sly, If You Want Me to Stay. I mean, that's, that's to me, it's a genius tune. And I think that was one of Sly's favorite tunes. I, I really do, yeah. the way he sang it. I love yeah. that song. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, he's another one. It, it's, it's, a, it's very hard to date Sly Stone yeah. songs, yep. you know, uh, and it, it I, and I think really it has something to do with that era, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, that it was a lot of bands and, 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 and a lot of, a, a lot of bands that, and it, it was something about, you know, uh, um, I just, I just talked to a, a, a friend of mine from San Francisco, I, I stay in touch with a lot of friends, mm-hmm. Bobby Weir, Bobby Weir. Mm-hmm. And I'm doing something musically, and Bobby said something that only guys from San Francisco would say. He, he said, "Well, Joe, I, I, you know, I care how it sounds." He says, "But I want to know what people are going to think in the next millennium about how it sounds." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "Well, I never thought of it like that, Bobby. But you know what? I think you're absolutely right. I think you know a lot of people were recording." For then but they were recording it's like it's like your footprint you yeah. know and it's like they weren't record if you walked into a room in, in where, where at that party where i was at mm-hmm, with jimmy mm-hmm. henderson and, and sliding and you walk and he says hey man i, I'm, I want to be rich and famous i want to be a star you would have got laughed out of the room because mm-hmm. nobody when, when when i grew up nobody would say that you know it was just something that you know, you, you just, you wanted to be a better musician. Right. You right. wanted to be a better person. You know, yeah. you wanted to do benefits for this, for that, for that, for this. For the, why ain't they calling me to do the benefits, you know? <laughs> it, it, was, it was about something totally different, you know? It really was. Yeah. I'm going to bring up something totally different here. I'm friends with a guy named Vicky Womack. His uncle was Bobby Womack. And, and mm-hmm. B- Binky, check him out on YouTube. He does R and B. He's a great guitar player, not getting a lot of recognition. You know, you would think so because of the name. He's part of the Walmack family and everything. Really nice guy. 
and good musician. If you get a chance, just go on uh, YouTube and check him out. Binky Womack. How do you spell the first name? You know, Binky, like a, a pacifier, Binky, that's B I N K Y. Binky. Oh, uh, Binky. Okay. Okay. Binky. I, I, I'll, yeah. I'll I, I check him out. Um, nice guy. I, I, and yeah, he's I knew, very, I very Bobby. talented. I, I knew Bobby. Uh, 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 I was around Bobby mm -hmm. several times. Um, right. Uh, I, I didn't. Uh, um, they have big family, you know, huge yeah. family. His, his real right. name is Curtis. Just like his his dad, you know, his oh, dad. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Walmack yeah. family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huge, Good tradition man. there. Yeah. 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 Good guy. Yeah, we we kind of try to help each other out anyway. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Well, I, I'm gonna look at him. Um, okay, yeah. cool. Joe, I asked you this question before. I'm gonna ask it again. You had a field of dreams wish, like the movie, to perform, collaborate with anyone from the past or present. Who would that be? Uh, the past, but well, just just to really push myself, mm -hmm. and I, I opened up for him, but I didn't get a chance to play for him, and that would be Thelonious Monk. Really? Whoa, that's a good mm -hmm. one. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just so that just so that nobody could ever come and play what we played. Yeah, ever. <laughs> Man, I don't want to know what we're gonna play. I don't want to know what kids in. <laughs> I don't want to know anything. I just want to know where to be. And that's it. That's mm. all I want to know. And Good when we start off playing, and then I'll just I'll just drop in, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> whatever happened, happened. How about a jazz album? Yeah, you haven't done a jazz album, have you? I, I did a, a sort of eclectic record like that uh, called right. Pasatiempo, called Pasatiempo. Okay. Which in Spanish in pastime. Right, right. Uh that was about 93, 95. I, I don't know. But um it's my wife's favorite record because mm -hmm. I I I maybe took one guitar solo in the whole <laughs> record, but it was, it was all about singing. And and I, I mm -hmm. was, there's a um, a great sax player named Ernie Watts. Right, right. And, and um, me, Ernie, I, my manager was married to Ernie's manager, mm. and so I I would see Ernie and I'd say, man, we got to do something one day. And Ernie, we got. So I looked for an opportunity to do something, and I was fortunate to allow for opportunity uh that you get ernie and and um i was fortunate enough to get uh, one of the older guys that i know from from the bay area barry mm -hmm. goldberg to play barry goldberg played the organ right and uh and i had ernie and uh wallace rooney rest his soul played the trumpet mm -hmm. and uh in dugu chancellor the great drummer rest his soul mm -hmm. uh was on on drums and bob hurst to uh Play with Branford myself quite a bit. It was right. on the bass, and, and we we just uh we're in the studio. We 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 did this totally eclectic record called Casa Tempo, and oh, I it. got to oh yeah, yeah. it's it's uh, <laughs> my wife's favorite. Oh, so we did it. a lot of jazzier things, a lot of jazzier things on yeah. there. But I, I haven't done a, a serious jazz record, which I, I should do because mm -hmm. I was I was in the Lonely and Smoke Institute, and I was playing with all those great players. Yeah, you know, and um, sure. So it's so maybe you just gave me an idea. Yeah, I love jazz, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you know, it, it's what you, what you can hear of it. it, it you know, it's 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 sort of um, it's it, I, I hate to say the lost American classical oh, art, yeah. but it yeah. really doesn't get a, a lot of uh, attention nope. at at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's 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 too bad because you you do have a lot of great younger players who, who are just great musicians. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, mm -hmm. I don't know. You know. Well, when you're set, let me know. I'll call my friend Billy Cobham and uh, see if he'll play drums on your album. How's that? Yeah, I like <laughs> Billy Cobham. Uh, I, like, I like Billy Cobham. Yeah. yeah, man. Do another Spectrum album, you know? Yeah. I'll, I'll call John McLaughlin and we'll, we'll get some other cats. Yeah. Jeff Beck? I don't know. You and Jeff Beck together? What do you think? <laughs> I, I like I, I like Jeff Beck. I, yeah. I've, seen, I've seen him since the 60s, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And um, he, he's just uh, he just keeps growing and growing and growing. You know, these what, what musicians aspire to be someone that's always growing, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah. you, you know, the song um, we, we ended as lovers. I forgot that we've ended as lovers or whatever. Yeah. Which was uh -huh. a Stevie Wonder tune, actually. And yeah. I've, I've, you know, Sarita sang that song originally. Mm -hmm. Sarita was married to um, 
uh, Stevie Maybe. Wonder at the time. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I love well, Serena, she, man. Serena, what yeah. a voice she had, you know? Yeah, well, she, you know, she also, you know, what, what wrote, wrote, you know, co-wrote "You Are So Beautiful," right? I didn't know that. I did. Yeah, her and Billy, her and Billy Preston wrote that song. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. They were a good team. They were a good team. And and, and Billy did it before Joe Cocker did it. Yeah. Yeah, and then Joe did it, and it became a worldwide hit. You know. Yeah. But it's it's a great song, and Sarita's a great songwriter. And Billy's a legend. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a Beatle. He's a Stone. I mean, come on. (laughs) And he played with Mahalia Jackson. Wow, that's right. Ray, Ray Charles. He goes way Don't back. Forget. Since he was and a kid. Sly, and, and him and Sly Stone were like bookends. Believe really? Me. Oh, yeah, in our neighborhood, man. Yeah. Billy and Sly, they were always writing, always doing stuff together. Always. I saw Billy with George Harrison in concert and with the Stones. <laughs> he was yeah. always there. And I think I yeah. saw him with the Ringo, too, with the All-Star band at one mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Joe, I want to thank you, man, for being on the show today. You're you're a great legendary guitarist. You've got a wonderful voice. I look forward to more great music from you, man, because I, I love your stuff. I really do. Well, I sure appreciate you having me. It's always a pleasure talking to you, man. And let's do it again sometime. We will do it again. I, I want to thank John Lappin of Lappin Enterprises for this interview. I want to say purchase a new album by Joe Lewis Walker entitled Eclectic Electric, officially released November 12th, but I'm sure you can find it out there. It's on Cleopatra Records, and I'm sure you can find it on Amazon.com. And of course, you can find Joe Lewis Walker at www.joelewiswalker.com. You're on Facebook. You're on Instagram. Thank you, Joe. and God bless you, man. Appreciate everything, Ray. Take care. All right, man. You too. Bye-bye now.